What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Director's Podcast. And today, guys, we have a special episode. We're only two episodes in, um, but we we got a special one. And um, if you guys haven't watched the last one, stop this podcast right now and go watch the previous episode, okay? And then come back to this one and then share it, okay? Because you're going to want to hear everything that we're going to talk about in this podcast. So today, we have a special guest um, some may call him the golden boy. Um, <laughs> some may call him the best actor to ever live. Uh, some may call him the next Matthew McConaughey. Uh, William Bain, everybody. <laughs> oh, great to be here, y'all. Great to be here. Great to have you. Great to have you. And um, before he talks about a little bit about himself, I met Will. Uh, it's coming up on a year almost. Um yeah. He uh, he was my lead in my uh, movie that's gonna be coming out uh, in two this, days. Yeah, when it when this drops, it'll be two days. Yeah, right? two days. So uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, he was a lead. Uh, we have quite the story. We have quite the uh, experiences under our belt so far. And uh, well, I'll give it to Will to to introduce himself, to talk a little bit about himself, and then we'll get into the questions. All right. So um, my name is Will. I have been doing theater slash acting since about, uh, I guess technically I started taking theater class in seventh grade, but I didn't do a play till uh, eighth grade. And um, I joined theater in kind of a, I had a weird reason for joining theater. I actually st saw Captain America and I saw Chris Evans come out of that machine, you know? <laughs> And I was like, dude, what a life just to be like jacked and like make a bunch of money. And all you do is run around throwing a, fi a frisbee. That's so where that's, where, came in. that's where my, uh, <clears throat> I guess my, I, don't, I wouldn't call it a dream yet. I think it was just the idea was like born into my head that acting was a career. But I didn't think it was like a thing that people actually did. I thought it was just like, I don't know, unrealistic. So... Uh, but nonetheless, I kept doing theater, um, and I didn't, I just kept doing it. Like, there was no real reason um, until my junior year when I uh, auditioned for colleges. Uh, I also realized I wasn't cut out for college football, so <laughs> I, but I wanted to go to college for something. So I auditioned for colleges and got some, some solid interest, not as much as Grace, uh, last year. And then <clears throat> I was like, Oh, maybe I'm good enough to like pursue this. So I kept pursuing it, started focusing a lot more, taking a lot more seriously. And then with that, I got a lot better, a lot faster. And, um, shortly after landed my first ever like lead role in high school musical, I was Troy Bolton. <laughs> I wish y'all could have seen that, bro. Oh, um, and then I, uh, after that, I, immediately did uh escape the ocean and that's how me and jackson met and uh going forward i still have to, i'm yet to pick a university and uh i'm stressing about that maybe we'll talk about that later in the later in the podcast but uh yeah met jackson more more films are yet to come this is what i love to do uh i'm prepared to be a bum on the street if that's what it takes to be an actor Ooh, i like that so yeah, that's 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 about me. Yeah, we'll be homeless together. Yeah. All right. So I know you get you went into it a little, but like what really like you, you mentioned Captain America and all that, but really what like set you off to like this is what I want to do? Like why why did you like start taking it seriously? Right. Um, well, I think uh, I don't know I don't know where to put like a specific like this was this was the moment. Mm -hmm. But I think it was after uh, we started football season last year, I realized that I sucked. And I was <laughs> like, dang, this is there, this is not in my future. But I, uh, at the same time, we were doing this show called Dark Road, which is kind of similar to our summer film, actually. And uh, uh, we were doing it, and my director was like, I really like what you're doing with your character like it's so interesting and every time you're on stage it's, it's so much more interesting than i thought it'd be and 
So I was like, oh, okay. And I got a lot of high praise from her. And she was like, you're, you're improving a lot, like in between shows. Like, like it's like leaps and bounds. So I was like, if I can keep improving, like by a lot in between each shows, and um, <clears throat> then maybe I can do something with acting, like as a career. And then I didn't have anything else going for me. Uh, my grades were kind of mid, so I, I knew there wasn't, uh, I'm not a future doctor. So I just held on to acting and, uh, just poured myself into that, focused on that. And then, yeah, now, now I'm really wanting to be an actor and it's, it's really the only thing I love. So that's how I got into it. Nice. Well, I think. I think for everybody, there's like a stage of like when you see it as a little kid, even for me for directing, like it's just something fun. Like you mm -hmm. just want to do it for fun. But then like there's a moment in time where this, you know, flip switches and you yeah. become like, OK, well, I actually want to do this for a profession. Yeah, and I think that's cool because I think almost everybody I've met in this industry so far has had that. Like, you know, they dream about it. They make these short films or they, you know, try acting with their friends and family. Um, but then, like, at some point in time, there's, like, a switch. Yeah. And I think, like, if that switch doesn't happen for you, then it's just, like, a phase or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, my uh, theater teacher told me if there's... N she says that um, people in the industry um, say that if there's if you can't see yourself doing anything else and loving anything else, then that's when you go for it. Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah. I guess we're going for it. Yeah, so... So you've been doing stage acting for how long? How many years? So starting in eighth grade, that would make this my fifth year. So on stage. five years stage. So let's say four before you did escape. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, obviously you knew you knew the way around the stage. You knew what that entailed and all yeah. the details. So how early on were you kind of nervous or scared? Like when we reached out to you casting wise and what you thought, and even like transitioning like to that first day on set, like mm -hmm. this is not the stage anymore. This is the screen. So the, I mean, I was, I knew I wanted to eventually transition to film acting um, because I think I'm naturally better, uh, better geared for it. Like, uh, I think I'm good at stage acting, but I think just naturally I'm just better at film. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I I was watching Dazed and Confused when I got a call from Grace and she was like, hey, I just got a got out of a meeting with these directors or because it was you and Talon. Mm -hmm. And um, she's like, I just got out of a meeting with this uh, these directors, the short film that I'm in this summer. Um, they're still looking for their lead role. Do you want me, do you want me to send you do you want me to send them your information and you can audition? And I was like yeah uh that sounds good to me and so eventually i think either later that night or like the next day you reached out to me and you're like hi my name is jackson i'm 17 <laughs> i'm in <laughs> i'm uh i'm uh in high school i like filmmaking uh would you be interested in auditioning for this film i said yes and then <clears throat> i wasn't I wasn't going to be surprised if I got, if I didn't get it. I was just like, eh, you know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, it'll happen. It'd be cool if I got it. But I mean, I didn't, I didn't know what I'd be missing out on if I didn't get it. So I was just like, whatever happens, happens. So I just, uh, did my best with my audition. Luckily I was the only one that I auditioned. <laughs> and, uh, so I got the role and then, oh, and then Susan was very helpful with, um, s my transition from stage to screen because she, I thought it would be the same for some reason. I thought it'd be the same. And she was like, it's actually a very big difference. So we, I remember we had a rehearsal and, um, it was like, I think it was in here. No, it was in the, it was in the room. Oh, it was like, okay. on, yeah. And, <clears throat> um, and then my theater teacher was also telling me that it's like, it's a lot more like with your eyes, you gotta, you you have to act with your eyes. You can't like kind of be big and expressive because whenever you're on stage, you have to the you have to animate yourself a lot more so it you can um, get your performance to the back of the, to the back row. But with acting, I mean, 
the the back rows right here. Yeah. So uh that was different. Uh I had to tone it tone it back a little bit more, which wasn't hard because I was depressed anyways. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was definitely a a jarring transition, I guess, because I I'd be like sitting there, and then whenever you'd say like action, I had to collect all the momentum that happens up until that point, and like just get it out like right there. Whether whereas like when you're doing stage, you ha you have the whole show to be building, yeah, and it's it's fresh in your in your mind. You're feeding off the crowd's energy, but with film, it's it's nothing. It's just go, and you have to have it all like right there in the moment. So that was jarring. But, uh, yeah, and I think, I think, as many breaks as we took, we kind of broke momentum so yeah. at some points, um, and that's kind of like why I mentioned in the summer, you know, shooting less days, more scenes, because you, you drive towards that momentum. You're, yeah. you're on your feet constantly, um, so and it kind of keeps you fresh, and instead of like taking breaks and all that, mm -hmm. um, and going into like Escape the Ocean, I knew I had to take a little more breaks because like the content and mm -hmm. you know. Me personally and you too. Yeah, I remember the breaks were hard. They did like kind of kill my momentum because your mom would come in and like be like telling jokes, cracking us up, whatever. Yeah. And like, uh, and I'd be like, like 10 minutes later, I had to be like crying or mm -hmm. something like that. So it was, the breaks definitely did not help. But uh, if, I, I mean, if you needed them, then it is, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, I think for like, even like like I told you, like I didn't even know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, so like, <laughs> kind of breaks to gather like what was going on, or like, not even terms of like mental, but camera sound yeah, yeah, and yeah. all that. Um, and like, you know, at the yeah. time too, we weren't even like we didn't know each other. Oh my gosh, it was so awkward. Yeah, like the first like the first week, <laughs> like we would we had uh, days where we were just shooting you and me, and we'd be like running around the neighborhood or in in here and I'd be like crying in front of you and I was just like what the <laughs> heck is going on like but I was just like this is this is film I guess yeah I, mean, I, I didn't know and I mean you're the only other uh you're the only film oh no because I've worked with Karis mm -hmm. in the film but she's also she's also new too so mm -hmm. yeah I think yeah it was pretty funny I think the second day of like filming like we were filming that scene in the bathroom mm -hmm. and like, it was just awkward. Like I was in the tub laying down and like you, the camera was in the tub with me yeah. and like you were screaming and, yeah. um, and then that next day it was like 14 hours. Like we were in there doing all those non dialogue scenes. And yeah. Like, no, nobody got there till like three o'clock. I think we started at like eight or mm -hmm. nine and nobody else got there till three. And I don't think we said a word to each Bro, other. Probably not. I know. Like, <laughs> action cut. Yeah. I kind of gave him some instructions about how I wanted him to be. And like, that was it. Just, yeah. Or like, uh, all right, that was good. Next one. And then yeah. I'd be like, are you sure that was good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and kind of like directing, like I didn't know. And honestly, like I like to ask my actors, like, what do they think? Mm -hmm. Like, I know you guys think, well, if yeah, I'm okay yeah. with it, like then let's move on. But I think it's so important that you include them in the process because like, mm -hmm. you know, you could say the takes good, but, and then, but personally, you know that, oh, well, I, sh I got more in me. Like, yeah, I yeah. got something in me. Let me try it. <clears throat> um, so I think, like, it's important to include and, you know, directors that are out there that are watching or whatever, young filmmakers, like, include your actors in the process. Like, ask them, like, what did they like? And they might, like, Will, the first time I asked, like, w and he responded, like, well, what did you think? I was like, you know, just give me your general thoughts, too, because you should include everybody. You know, I'm not saying include, like, the sound guy, like, because too many opinions become the problem on set and then you're yeah. just throwing crap everywhere. So but m ask your lead, ask your, you know, main supporting cast, like what what do they feel, too? And obviously, too, it's a big um, it's a big mindset with you, too. Like if you don't think it's good, you know, tell them that, you know, there was sometimes even working on twenty dollars like I gave you some critiques and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. like, don't be shy of that. Like they're not going to bite. Like, yeah. you're the director. You have a vision you know, lead them. Yeah, and actors got to be open to correction. I mean, yeah, like you think you're a talent and you think like you know what you're doing. You think you know the character better than the director does, but the director knows what he wants to see. So you have to be able to, willing to make adjustments and change on the fly. It's it's not it's not your story, really. It's, it's the writers and the directors. Yeah. 
Well, Escape the Ocean comes out in two days, and how are you feeling? You 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 saw it at the premiere. You know, I don't even I'm. I've been so busy with so many other things. Like I have not thought about Escape the Ocean. I am kind of scared for my friends to see it, <laughs> especially since, um, like, they, you know, they're your stereotypical stereotypical douchebag high school dudes. <laughs> so like, I don't know what they're gonna think. So <laughs> it could be like uh, that was weird. That was corny. <laughs> I'm like, well, you're not you're not watching it. Like you're just watching it to watch me. You're not watching yeah. it to to learn something. So it's, I am nervous about that, but, um, I, you know, I hope a lot of people see, it. I hope, I hope it does well. I hope it reaches people the right people and I hope it, you know, changes lives hopefully. Yeah. And, and for you guys that don't know, which is shame on you that don't know the topic of the film or, or what it's about, or even know that we made a film, uh, shame on you. Um, but the topic is, you know, a boy finds himself in a depressed state of mind and, and he doesn't know a way out. Um, and he meets this girl that kind of gives him some advice and, and, you know, oh, that's all I'll give you from that. So you'll have to watch it. Um, but when it comes out, make sure you watch it, share it, you know, just don't like Will said, don't watch it from a standpoint of like, oh, I know that person. And, yeah, don't do that. Um, because that's not the point of this film. It's not. And like I said at the premiere, it's I didn't make this film for personal gain or you know, to better my filmmaking career. I made it to tell the story and to impact lives. So, you know, watch it and really find the meaning and um, don't forget to share it because that's the biggest thing. Yeah, and other people might need to hear the message. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're doing this because we love it, but we're also doing it to, um, to reach people and to help people. I mean, it's all, all part of God's plan, I guess. And uh, how he how he wants to reach people and touch people's hearts and maybe give hope to people who don't have any. Yeah, well said. So, Escape the Ocean isn't your first film with me. Well, it was my your first film, but it uh, hasn't been your only film. Right. Um, you did twenty dollars. You recently got nominated for best actor at a uh, film festival. So, hey, yeah, man. A uh, round of applause for him. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank very, very good, very good. Um, so you know. You weren't lead in that film. You were a, a supporting role. Mm -hmm. um, kind of talk about like, you know, you you came in to escape the ocean as the lead, as the most important mm -hmm. character, and then I guess you had to find you tell had to tell yourself like this is a dial back. Like I'm supporting. I got to drive towards you know Caroline the lead. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's always as an actor, it's not always fun to like go from a, a big like lead role like you're like you're the star, yeah. and then you got to like take a step back and. Let, let someone else steal the spotlight. It's like sometimes that experience can always be like a little humbling and a little, <clears throat> um, I don't know, I don't know the word, but it's just not, it's not always fun. I mean, you gotta, you gotta kind of suck it up. Uh, but it's, I mean, it, I, I didn't really mind. I mean, I was, I was ready. I was just ready to do my job and, um, it was going to be a stretch cause I was playing an old man <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how to play an old man. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you guys go follow the, the channel. Please so, subscribe. Yeah. Anyways. Um, the old man, I, after like a while, I was like, how am I going to play an old man? Like, this is going to be kind of weird. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm like the right person for this. Um, <clears throat> I, then I was like, wait a minute. It's it's an opportunity to try something completely different, something that I wouldn't normally do and to really stretch myself as an actor. And uh, as an actor, especially as a young actor, it's always great to take like opportunities like that to to make yourself more, um, what's the word? Well, uh, well-rounded. More well-rounded, but also like you can do more things. What is the word I'm looking for? Like you can do a lot of, a lot of different roles. What is that? No, not marketable, not multitasking. Sorry, we Bro, we have an audience. We have an audience here. What is the word? He doesn't I was know. Thinking about, I was literally thinking, versatile, more versatile. That's Thank it. you, Grace. Thank you, Grace. Shout out, Grace. <laughs> Shout out, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, more versatile, because that's important for marketability. Also, thank you, Grace. And um, recruit. Also, you you'll just get more more work if you're versatile and if you can do a lot of things. And I think. Also, if you play your uh, your uh, typecast or whatever, like 
if you have a lot of experience acting and stretching yourself and you're just going to play that role so much better than yeah. if you as if that's all you played. Yeah. Well, I mean, you did great. You got nominated and uh, hopefully you get a little nominations for more and uh, shout out Caroline too. Shout uh, out Caroline. Have y'all seen her audition? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna leak her audition tape because uh, yeah. it's she's gonna get so pissed, <laughs> bro. She's gonna be like, "What?" <laughs> Sorry, Caroline. Never she mind. might cuss for the first. What the fletch? What the <laughs> fletch? <laughs> fetch, fetch, fetch. Um, well, you know, I think it was, it was definitely different working on twenty dollars because it Escape was. the Ocean. We had, I mean, also I we shot it in. Oh, I guess we. We shot it in two days, but that was way shorter. It was like two afternoons. Yeah. As opposed to like Escape the Ocean was shoots, like 14 hour shoots. It was how many day shooting days do we have? 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. Going from 11 shooting days to two shooting days, it felt so quick. I was like, what the heck? Is yeah. Over? I think like even by my standard, like I wrote it like two weeks before we started filming it. Like it was yeah. quick. Like you know, there was no planning. We had like one meeting. Yeah. Like this is what it's gonna be. You know, here it is. We're filming. Um, you know, there was there wasn't a lot of time to perfect it. Yeah. Um, but I still think it turned out pretty good. Um, oh, you do know. you know what? Have you heard back from UIL? No, not yet. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I think for the time that we put into it and the rush, um. I knew acting wasn't going to be a problem because I knew that both both actors were were going to be spot on and uh, we rehearsed and you know I I had all confidence in that, um, but like getting the shots and and doing that you know it takes a little more time and uh, breaking it down you know script wise all that filmmakers you guys know, um, but I think for the amount of time we had we, it's pretty good yeah pretty solid. yeah solid I mean you know it's already been finalist at two festivals so you know that's all we could ask for yeah i mean i i was so skeptical when he wanted to cast this random girl from what is it what class did y'all have together food science food science shout out miss O. food I science like, i was like bro why are you why do you want this random girl from your food science <laughs> class so badly like there's she's she has zero acting experience she's not gonna be that great <laughs> Why don't you go? I have so many friends that you could cast, and they'd do it just fine. And he he went on like with a week a week of this. I was like, yes. bro, just, just like, let me be, let me be. I was like, bro, come on. And then um, and it didn't help too because she wasn't. She kept pushing back her when yes, she turned it on. Like, bro, <laughs> very unprofessional. <laughs> and then um, and then one day I was at I was at rehearsal for uh the show that we just finished at my school, Peter and Starcatcher, and I. Uh, we were like about to get started and I get this text from Jackson and it's a video. And whenever he sends me like, uh, uh, he always sends me like people's auditions and he, I, he lets me give input, which is nice because <laughs> I get to like kind of pick who I'm working with. And, um, so he's, he sends me this text, this video, it's her audition. And he's like, Loki, not bad. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I was like, okay, let's, so this will be solid. I watched probably like I put the first two lines. I put behind the t context of Loki not bad. I didn't want to put like, oh my god, she's amazing, and then yeah. you watch and be like, uh, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, so I watched. Uh, she goes, "Hi, I'm Caroline Bradford. I'm, <laughs> however tall. My eyes are brown. Blah blah blah." She and then she turns and looks away from the camera and she starts the scene. She does two lines and I throw my phone across the room. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then everyone around me was like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and then I was like, this girl. And then I was like, oh, they don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to like explain. I was like, we're doing this. We're doing this film. And this girl audition is it's really good. And she has zero acting experience, blah, blah, blah. And I finished it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it got better. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so I was like. At that point, I was like, thank goodness Jackson was <laughs> waiting for her. And yeah, so that's that's a little fun story about casting Carolina. Yeah. And Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> but also as like a director and a filmmaker, you've got to be willing to take chances. And, you know, I took a chance like I don't I didn't, outside of this year. I did not know Carolina. I didn't know of her. I didn't know what she was, you know, looking for acting. Like I just did not know. And, you know, but I walked in, I told Joaquin, like, you know, this girl could be in a movie. Um, 
because you know honestly shout out you know uh, i don't want to bash ugly people but like if you're ugly you're not gonna really get casted for a film Uh, i I know i said this in a meeting once and uh you know they laugh but you know it's true you know and especially in hollywood too like it's all about looks hollywood does not care about your feelings yeah if you're an actor and you're sensitive you might want to toughen up buttercup because they do not care they will they'll kick you on the street and they'll replace you in a heartbeat even if you get a role yeah you're at any time as an actor you are you can be replaced so don't don't get comfortable yeah. work your butt off yeah so um you know i told joaquin and like she kind of overheard us talking about making movies or escape the ocean premiere um and Dude, she's like little nerds in class <laughs> So what film are we well, we were breaking next? down some shots. Or I think we were reviewing a scene from. No, no, no. It's great. Origin. It's great. Um, and uh, by the way, that's all I do in school. Like you know, people that are in my class. Like if I don't talk to you, well, I don't talk to anybody. Uh, <laughs> but like, I'm not doing classwork. I'm working on scripts. I'm. I text this guy constantly. Yeah. You know, for stuff. Like, Bro, are you not like doing school? And I'm, <laughs> like I'm not allowed to have my phone out in class. Like if I do, it's taken. And sh- and he's like texting me like nonstop. <laughs> and then when I text back, he like responds like that. I'm like, what? I thought it was funny. Anyways, we're getting off track. Yeah, but we are. We w- totally are. Um, I thought it was funny how I sent you that text last night and you responded at four and I responded at like nobody yeah. would. <laughs> yeah. Were you expecting me to respond? I mean, I was like, I was like, there's a chance this guy's up because I remember you had this kick where you'd wake up at 4 a.m. for like a week straight. And I was like, I was like, but well, he's not going to be up because I, I wake up that early to work out. So I don't. Uh, Cause normally I have rehearsal, but I also do it to kind of like mentally, uh, m- like strengthen myself so I can make myself do whatever I need to get done. And I need to get, I need to work out every day. So I put it at the beginning of the day. So I, you know, toughen up the brain, all that jazz. And, uh, but yeah, so I text this guy at four thirty when I woke up, what did I tell what were we were talking about? We we're talking about, uh, I had to tell you something about, and then it was South by Southwest. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. And I was like, I was like, okay, sounds good. And he was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was four in the morning. He didn't even need to respond to my text. Like it was, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I, I, and I'll text him out of the blue. Like we have this summer project we're working on. And I think one night I just like, there was no like, you know, I'm right. I'm going to write something. I was like, Will, like I want to, I want to get you in another lead before you uh, go off to college. And, it, and it's kind of like, boom, like just like that. Mm-hmm. There's no like, well, you know, we're thinking about that. Like we just go straight to it. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. like every day. I think we talk every day and it's just like statements, facts. Yeah. It's not like, well, should we do this? Yeah. We're not, that? we're not, we're not dreamers. We're doers. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, back to Caroline. Um, so, back you know, she, Caroline. she overheard us and, and she was like, you know, you guys do film. That's so cool. Um, and like, I think the day after or the, the moment after, like we walked out of class, I was like, Joaquin, like she could be in a movie. Like, let, let's see. Um, and I remember going to the library and I just sat there and um, somebody, it was the holiday season was coming up and somebody had mentioned like Hallmark movie to me. I think Joaquin did. And, and he, she was like, she's, she's the type of girl you could see in a Hallmark movie. And like, for me, if you know me personally, like I'm not some person that's going to write a happy ending and all this <laughs> jazz. Um, so I was like, okay, well, you know, there's there's always these Hallmark movies where this one person meets somebody and something happens. It necessarily doesn't have to be love or something like that. So what happens if you do that and, and then you put a Jackson twist on it? Um, and then that's basically how $20 came out. And I just was sitting in the library, got out my notepad, and I just jotted, you know, different points. Um, you know, I put like homeless man. I put, mm-hmm. you know, girl meets homeless man. And then the twist of my, like, you know, the family's dead and all that. Yeah. So, um, a wicked little twist. Yeah. And yeah. then I think, like, the two days after I, I jotted it, I wrote the script, I gave it to Caroline. And, uh, I think it was like three days before we heard back. If nah, you, it was like a week. It was like a week. Was it, Joaquin? Dude, cause, I, okay. It yeah, was a cause, week. uh, I remember I was like, bro, has she, like, not said anything? Like, yeah. I saw the email because you carbon, you, uh-huh. like, uh yeah you carbon copied copied me to it and um i i remember seeing it and i was like oh okay so she'll audition soon and like a week went by and i was like yo is this girl gonna audition yeah and, and i think from that point she kept pushing her audition back she's like oh, i think no. i was in buffalo when she was like finally like 
you know, I'm kind of, I'm interested, like, you know, let me send in an audition and that week we got it and uh, the rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah, so that's a little behind the scenes of $20. Uh, don't ask me when it's coming out because it's going to be know. a while. So just enough with those questions. And you guys are getting Escape the Ocean in two days, so. Yeah, yeah. pipe you, down. Yeah. So um, let's go into the next kind of segment here. Um, you've been doing this. You did stage five. You've been doing stage five, and you know you're coming up on a year of on-screen film. Yeah. Well, so I actually shot a my first ever like film film project was like a music video. Oh, that's right. But I didn't have any lines, Mm -hmm. and it was um it was like a student project for someone in college. So, I mean, it was experience, but it I don't consider it like it was my first like film. Yeah. And um, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I, I've been technically doing it for like a little bit more than a year, but yeah, basically yeah. a year. Yeah. So with that, I guess on stage and I, I think, you know, youth filmmaking and actually youth actors, like you got to start stage. I think that. Yes. Yeah. Every, every good actor has started at, at stage. Like, um, I think the only exception is like Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, but every like shout out Matthew. Yeah. Shout out Matthew. We, we love, love you, Matthew. Oh, well, <laughs> 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 all right. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, every mm, like 99% of, um, actors that are like successful started on stage. So you got to start that and kind of learn the basics, I guess. And then, um, then you can kind of transition to film. But so <coughs> over the years, like what, what key lessons have you learned from acting and like, what do you do? Cause I know you do a lot of character development, a lot of studying, but what do you do like on a daily basis or like not a daily basis, but you know, how to better your craft, you know? So the number one thing on improving, uh, really at anything, but acting especially is experience. Experience is key. Um, my, uh, my theater teacher, I learned most of my acting stuff from my theater, all my acting stuff from <laughs> my theater teacher. So I'm going to, I'll probably bring her up a lot if I'm like explaining something. So, um, her sister went to Trinity university, which is a very small theater program. She didn't originally, she wasn't majoring in acting or theater, but, uh, she switched her major to it. And then she started doing all these roles or all these shows. And she just got lead after lead after lead after lead. And some colleges do some crazy, like six shows a year, which is a lot. Like you're putting on your new character every, every couple of months, uh, or actually less than that. Cause you have summer break, which is two months. And then winter break is like what a month or a month and a half. Mm-hmm. And, um, so take all that away and you're, I mean, you're a new a new person a lot, so you're just acting, 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 and especially she's the lead role. She's got a lot of work to do. So um, <clears throat> eventually, she was so good that like she uh, the program flew her up to I think it was either New York or Chicago to audition for Unified Auditions, which is where you go and audition for a ton of different colleges at once. Um, Grace can tell you more about those because she did a lot of those and. Uh, so she auditioned, she went there to not even audition for the, uh, school that she went to and she went, uh, and then she passed by Yale and, uh, she auditioned for Yale and she got in full ride, I think. And Yale is the number two acting program in the world. And, um, I think after that she went, she went to Broadway and, um, she's done, she's, a successful actor and she doesn't, I mean, all she needs to do is act. Cause so yeah, she's solid. And I, that all started with experience and she just kept getting role after role after role. So, um, and also Matthew McConaughey, I read his book and, um, the, when he was in college, he just auditioned for everything he could. And he was always, he knew that, um, directors in Hollywood don't care about your grades um, they, they want to see what you can do. So he forgot about his grades, asked for, he asked if he showed up on test days, they would give him C's. Like that was the condition. He, all he wanted was C's. So he 
would go around auditioning, acting in anything he could, and then um, eventually he got, you know, uh, dazed and confused, and then went on to do a time to kill, and then blew up. But <clears throat> experience is so vital, and then also just, I mean, there's so many other things you got to think about, like whenever you're developing developing a character. But experience is the best way to practice developing like characters and and then uh, expanding your versatility, like um, uh, like the old man. And um, so yeah, if you're an actor, never ever ever turn away an opportunity, especially if you're in high school, because you have nothing better to do. You're, I mean, yeah, you have a couple of shows. And if the project inf- interferes with, you know, your school, uh, your school show, then I th- then that would be OK to like turn away. But like, um, you know, Jackson's had some experience with actors who uh, just straight up laugh in his face. And oh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen these these same people act, especially one of them. And he's not that great. He should not. He did not have the right to laugh in Jackson's face. Let's just say that. So experience is key. If you're an actor, grab everything that comes your way. Don't turn anything down. Uh, that's that's right, that's my number one key. Uh, I don't know. Is there anything else I should touch on, like developing a character? Yeah, I think. I mean, honestly, I was like really impressed because honestly, going first time directing actor, like I didn't know mm-hmm. how to break it down, and I mean now I know, but. Like, I was impressed because I didn't really give you any notes. Well, I, I gave you some notes um, and kind of just firsthand experiences. Yeah. Um, but, like, you came to set, like, ready. And um, I think one day you left your script and it was open and you had all these notes. And I think as an actor, a director, a sound, whatever the heck you are on a set, like, your script should be mm-hmm. covered in notes or yeah. highlighted or anything like that. So I remember... Um, my uh, theater teacher, again, she always told me, she's like, you need to analyze your script. And um, I'd be like, well, how do I do that? And the way I started doing it, and um, I mean, it might be different for anybody, but just start writing stuff. Like uh, read the lines and kind of write uh, like maybe a thought bubble. Like what what is your character thinking here? What is How is this scene making your character feel? And then just write anything you can. Keep going through it. Write, write more and more and more. And then, um, uh, yeah, just, just write, write as much as you can in your script. And then also look at, look at other things like research your, uh, character. Cause everything is based off of something like, um, everything's been done before. Yeah. So here I'll put, I, w- I won't use our summer film as an example yeah. cause I don't, I'm not going to give I don't want to give it away, Thank you. Thank you. but, um, <laughs> so our next show for my school is Bye Bye Birdie and I'm playing Conrad and the show is based off of the Elvis craze whenever he got drafted and I play like the Elvis character. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at um, Austin Butler and Elvis and how Austin Butler prepared for Elvis and how he mastered the voice and he got into, he started doing the dance moves and um, so look at all that stuff and like research, I'll research Elvis and listen to how he sings and practice singing his song so when I sing um, the character songs they kind of sound similar and it gives off that same vibe so there's so much more to research and then also to gather from the script and then there's stuff to get from the character breakdown um, and then yeah there, and then also you know what your character what other characters think about him um, and then also what what you think um, it's it's a mix of everything of, of all that that comes together to to make the character on screen or on stage. Yeah, and if you're listening to this and you're thinking like, oh my God, that's so much work. Like, why am I going to do that? Then just get out of acting or get out of the industry because, you know, the, I know people that won't take the time and, and that's what's really impressive about him and all the actors I've worked with so far is they dive so deep into their character that they're just obsessed with it. And you have to be obsessed with the work because, um, you know, I know what it feels like to to have a project and not be obsessed with it and you just don't want to do it and, it, and it's mm-hmm. no fun and, and it's like that. So you have to be obsessed with this work. And, and, you know, I think everybody yeah. in this room is obsessed with film or acting. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody wants to get better. And if you're not 
wanting to do the research or or any of that like just leave just get yeah. out you got to be obsessed with like honing your craft because like like you i'm like if i didn't care what i looked like on in escape the ocean if i just wanted to be on screen then i would have sucked and yeah. i mean you you probably could have replaced me like yeah. if if i was just there like oh yeah blah 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 and uh like i wasn't acting like i wanted my performance to be good like i wanted people to watch it and be like oh okay that's not yeah, that's not bad yeah. that kid that that dude's solid and <clears throat> um you know i just want to keep improving like you have to you have to be willing to do the extra work to make your performance just even a tiny bit better. Yeah, and I think one more point before we move on. As a as a young filmmaker, director, you have to be willing to take the chance to work with professionals, mm -hmm. to work with actual actors that know what they're doing. Like, yes, you have your friends. Yes, you have that. But at a point in time, you have to flip that switch and, and say, if I want to grow as a filmmaker, you have to learn how to direct actors. You're not going to walk into Hollywood and, and keep directing your friends. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. um, you have to know how to work with people that you don't know on a personal basis and you have to get to know. You also have to... Um, oh, my God. I just lost like <laughs> my thought. What was... Uh, You're talking about like um, working with professionals. And oh, yeah. Have you have to stop just stop working with your friends at a certain point and, and, and say to your friends, like, you know, dude, like we love you. I love you. Um, Unless friend your friends are also passionate about it. Yeah. In which case learn and grow together. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you like the last two films that I've done, like friends and family have been in it and it's just not, not good. Um, sorry guys. Um, <laughs> but it, it's the truth. And I had to look at myself and tell myself like if escape the ocean, if you want it to be what you think it should be, like you're gonna have to find professionals. And don't be scared, bro. Just go on on acting sites, go at high schools, follow their theater pages, and just go through the following or followers and follow them and DM them. Like that's what I did with y'all too. Like, mm -hmm. um, and and then take chances, like I did with Caroline. You know, I don't think you guys will be as lucky as me, but you know, go, <laughs> go try it out nope. and see. Um, but you also, as a director, you have to have that instinct about actors. You have to have this feel. Um, and if you don't have it, you know, you, you got to hone in on your craft and, and, and just, you know, kind of, you know, do better. So uh, last co segment, we're going to get into some questions. Wait, I got more stuff to say. About okay, acting. okay. Okay. So acting. Um, so actors, um, another key to uh, being successful is hold on to what makes you as an actor special. Don't like the thing that worries me about colleges uh, and like, going like picking my college is I don't want to end up like everybody else in that college. Cause if everyone comes out cookie cutter versions of them of each other, then no one's special and none of you are going to make it. Um, you have to like hold on to what makes you special. And that's why experience is so important because experience doesn't, uh, doesn't allow you to like, like if that's why I, that's why I never took like acting classes. Cause I was like, I feel like experience is more valuable Acting classes, there's value in them, but I feel like it's just it's just not as good as experience, and uh, I don't want to end up like the same as someone else because yeah. then, you know, it kind of comes up to a coin toss, really, in my mind. So uh, that uh, hold on to what makes you special, uh, get experience, and then the last thing is be professional, and don't be um, don't whine, don't don't create problems on set trust me then nobody wants to work with you and especially directors won't like you'll get you'll be a, a flash in a, hold on like a, yeah like a flash in a pan if you're unprofessional and if you're unfun to work with the best or directors like to work with actors who are hardworking, who come prepared even to like um uh like rehearsals try to try to have all your lines memorized by your first rehearsal now it's, sometimes that might be hard if you have a lot and a lot a lot a lot of lines but do your best come as prepared as you can and um yeah don't also don't talk crap about your co-stars that's that's the that's the best way to create division and create an unprofessional work environment and also it's childish yeah. don't do that and as a director 
that's the last thing you want to be dealing with. So don't do that. Um, and one more side thing, um, like take chances. Like the 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 role I'm, I gave Will in the summer, I don't think he's ever done before. I don't think he's no. And it's and Dude, I told I him played Troy Bolton before that. Yeah, I I told him writing it you know before i gave him what it, the script was about i told him it's going to be challenging you're mm-hmm. it's going to be out of your comfort zone and you have to do that you have to find even he he took the old man role and yeah. he's supposed to be playing this 65 year old man and he's like 17 like you know so yeah. take chances um I mean, yeah so you gotta you gotta learn how to find your man um and just just get your hands dirty man yeah all right well we're gonna move on to yeah. Some questions from We're probably the rambling I- on, and probably none of this makes sense. No, no it makes great sense. Waki, <laughs> how much time do we have? Time check. Sixteen, 16 minutes? minutes. All right, we gotta oh, speed shoot. through these questions. Okay. All right, Will, why acting? From Caroline Bradford. Why acting because I love it, and there's nothing I could see myself doing at all. I mean, it is one of the f- very few things that give me joy. The other things being friends, um, God. And that's it. So friends, God, and acting. That's it. Um, I cannot do, I can't stand classes. Like I can't stand math, science. <laughs> I hate it. I'm like, ah, oh. just if, if all I could do was act <laughs> and like, all if all I could do is act, that's what, that's it. Okay. My bad. Talk. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, if you could have been in one movie or show, what would it be? Luke. <clears throat> um, this is tough. I think. Um, I think I'm destined to play rom coms eventually. I know I know it's gonna it's gotta happen. I feel it. But um I really I just like any role. I mean if I picked a specific role I can't even p- pick a specific you should, role. You like, should just, you should pick uh the supporting character of Matthew McConaughey in um true uh true detective or yeah. Maybe yeah. You get to work with him. Anyway, yeah, I guess anything that puts me next to Matthew, <laughs> we love or you, Denzel Matthew. Washington, <laughs> Denzel Washington. Oh. We haven't talked about that. We need to talk about Denzel Washington. More. Have you seen Fences? No. Have oh you? my God. Have you seen Training Day? No. There we go. We're <laughs> even. We're <laughs> okay. even. Okay. Training Day is so good. We you both watch have. That. We have the DVDs. Okay. Anyways, um, wait, where are we? Oh, I'll read this and answer it. Uh, where did the story idea come from, Emily? Um, I'm guessing she's talking about twenty dollars. Um, basically, uh, if you're talking about escape the ocean. <laughs> Get out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm get. Um, it came from you know, like I said, a uh, Hallmark movie with a twist. Uh, I, I really wanted every film it has an emotional aspect of mine, and I want to include that in this uh, film that I made. And um, you know, I, I worry a lot about gun violence. I see it every day in America. I, I worry about like if I'll ever be a target of that, um, and like. How, what you could live with if something like that occurs. And um, like I went to Uvalde when the shooting happened and actually, you know, walked and, and, and what came up to the memorial and, and just seeing those families and their grief and their just dark lost soul. I just wanted to kind of express that on camera and, and for people to realize like, this is actual things like, you know, every holiday season, there's an empty seat at the table because of gun violence and, and it's wrong and it needs help. And um, it's not necessarily about the politics or what you believe, but it's the emotional family aspect. And, and that's really where the story came from. Also love your family, man. Yeah. They might not be there. Yeah. Um, you could read the, the next. next one. As a member of Gen Z, what do you bring to the table in your work that others don't? Karis. Karis has good questions, bro. Karis has good questions. Do you want to answer this one first? I think I think I can answer. Okay, okay. Okay. So a lot of <clears throat> from what I've seen of um people my age. Oh shoot. This is gonna sound like I'm dissing all my fr- oh. <laughs> all my co stars. But um <clears throat> a lot of people my age not just in my theater program. There's a few of you in my theater program that don't do this. But um hard work. And I I feel ugh, feels like I'm just like I don't know. I think that's true cuz I'm just bragging about myself, but No. Never. Uh hard work. Hard work is also a key to be, being a successful actor. Um hard work is key to being successful in anything. But uh you have to be willing to do the work like um El- like Elvis Austin Butler 
he got that role because Denzel Washington called the director and was like, you got it. You got to see this guy. This guy's un, this guy's work ethic is unbelievable. And they were in a Broadway show together, Denzel and uh, um, Austin Butler. They were in a Broadway show together and um, Austin Butler would get there early to help uh, to start getting into character. And but he always noticed that Denzel was like there earlier than him. So he started getting there earlier than Denzel. And then Denzel noticed that Butler was getting there ahead and they just kept going earlier and earlier and earlier and Denzel Washington was like oh man this guy's work ethic is great and he recommended him for I mean that's Elvis is like his breakout role he got nominated he he and that role was so great because he worked his tail off I mean every every minute detail he was insistent on perfecting uh Elvis and getting I mean yeah like yeah yeah so hard work, I think, is what I bring to the table. Yeah, I, and I would just add like obsession. Like I'm obsessed. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I mean, I don't do schoolwork a lot, yeah. and I'm just constantly watching YouTube. You don't have to go to this thousand dollar film school. You don't have to do that. Go watch YouTube. There's so much content out there. Take notes. Like I have a journal full of filmmaking notes. So I think. This is different than acting, though. I yeah. don't think all acting YouTube videos are. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So keep keep that. I mean, I'm sure there's some. If you're just starting out, there's definitely some basics you can pick up. But um, it I don't know. It worries me because you don't want to compromise what makes you special. Yeah. So if you're a filmmaker, by all means, yeah, Google everything you can. But if you're an actor, pick up the basics if you need to. But dig into that experience. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Uh, where are we? Um, are there are there certain movies you think should not be made? Why or why not? Um, filmmaker perspective. No. Like, go make any movie you want. Like, tell your story. If you have a story, tell it. Like, don't hold back. Like, you know, there's so many people, and, and like even like Hollywood's an example. Like, they they take risk all the time. Um, and and not to like be obsessive about Oppenheimer but you know as a studio executive getting a call saying this you want to make a three-hour movie about you know the atomic bomb like who would watch that you know yeah would come to thought but take risks like you know make a story if you have a story write it make it film it put it out there yeah I mean also uh Hamilton is a great example of like like taking a risk on an idea because imagine pitching that to a bunch of producers it's i want to talk about the founding fathers and um it's going to be very long and there's not going to be much uh talking and it's actually going to be wrapped by people who are not the same race as the founding fathers like that's a that's a wild idea and it's a great idea and it worked so well and that's what makes it so cool and uh so yeah take risks but uh, I, I think as a Christian, movies should not be made if it um, incorrectly displays uh, Jesus or incorrectly yeah. disp- displays the character of God because that is something that's very, that is oftenly um, portrayed wrong. Some people get the complete wrong idea about God. And that also comes down to how uh, Christians treat other people, which Christians need to treat people with love only, um, regardless of like beliefs. Like, you need to love the person because Jesus loves the person, no matter who they are. Yeah. And um, even if, uh, you know, you don't agree with something they do, you're not perfect either. Um, you need to you need to realize God loves you through your sin just as much as He loves them through their sin. So you need to love them, and the only person that can judge is someone who's who's perfect. You know, Jesus said he who is perfect can cast the first stone whenever those uh whenever the Pharisees wanted to stone that the the adulterous woman or was she a prostitute? Either one. Either way. And um if you do if you are someone that um I'm getting way off topic here, but I think this is important. Yeah, so I'm going to yeah. keep talking. So, if you are someone who um if you are a Christian and you tear someone down because of um or if you judge someone because of uh, something that is that's sinful, um, just be—I mean—be careful on how 
how God is going to expose you because in the, in that same story with Jesus and the, uh, Jesus saving the uh, adulterous woman from being stoned, it, it's, it's not, um, I don't think it's like, like actually proven, but people think that he wrote their sins down in the sand and, um, just exposed all of them and they all walked away from the, from the woman. And so, yeah, once again, if you're not perfect, you can't judge. So love everyone. Um, that, that is what Christianity is really all about. That is the true character of God. It's love. And, um, if you're someone who is also, if you're someone who's living in sin personally, like, um, whatever it is, uh, and you think God hates you because of the way you're living, he doesn't, he, all he wants is you. And, um, you don't need to clean yourself up to go to him. Like if you go to him, he will clean you up. So there's my take on that question. Even though I went way off topic, my bad. Um, just to piggyback off that, not the exact topic, but the only time a film shouldn't be made is if you're not telling the story by truth. Um, and that, and that's God too, but that's, you know, military films. If you're adding something to make it Hollywood esque or something fake, don't make it because every film should be truth storytelling and, and perfect. So last question before we run out of time, <laughs> uh, half of the question, maybe as an artist, how do you want to affect your audience? Um, like I like say and like what I just said is is telling a truthful story mm-hmm. is giving the audience truth and putting them into perspectives that they don't get to see on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Like escape the ocean. Not a lot of people know about mental health. Twenty dollars. Not a lot of people know what it's like to lose a loved one to gun violence. Um, and even this summer film, you know, not a lot of people know like how evil could be and and how powerful really, evil is. Yeah. So it's like <coughs> it's. I think the message of the summer film is how one wrong choice and your ignorance can lead you down a horrible path and there's no coming back from it. And we actually did a play about this and Grace was the lead and it talked about this uh, girl who took a guard, who took a job as a Nazi prison guard and how she changes over time and becomes this evil, heartless person. And at the end of her life, she, you know, like I remember watching, I remember watching it, watching her performance. And I was like, wow, like this girl went from being a loving sister and, and someone who just wants to provide for her family to someone who is of like, who has killed so many people and just like, she's like heartless and she's not even human anymore. And I was like, whoa. So I think it's really the same thing. So uh, yeah, like the message, the message is really cool. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think truth, truth is why uh, or is what I want to affect my audience by. And obviously emotion. Uh, all yeah. my films have uh, a lot of emotion in it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to wrap us. For wait, 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 I, I oh, didn't get to oh, answer the oh, question. Oh. Uh, how much time do we have? Three minutes. OK, so I think um, the stories that, you know, need to be told, like the un- the the stories that need more attention and the. Um, I think those are important to tell. Also, just you know, bring people, just bring people joy. It can be as simple as that. And in my like, if I if my performance brought someone joy, then I made their I made made their day better. You know, um, also demonstrate like uh, you know, the uh, again like the characters of God, like uh, like sacrifice and love and um, kindness, like. There's so so many important things you can teach through film and through stories. And also, you can, you know, you can teach like warnings against the opposite, like um, what what hate brings and what like like the hate you give. Have you seen that? No, that's we got some movies to watch movie, man. Okay, we got some movies to watch. Um, But to wrap it up, I just want to say I was at rehearsal for something. Um, and this and this uh, lead actress was so nervous about something and and the director was walking around and, and she's in the corner like all nervous because we're performing and um, she was getting ready to go on and and he tells her, let God control your voice. And I think I, in that moment, I was like, wow. So if the, if you, anything, if you're nervous about directing, acting, let God take the wheel, go ahead, let him 
he he'll, he's got you. So that's gonna wrap up today's episode. Yeah. Thank knows, you, Will. God knows his. God knows. Uh, what we'll, he's got we'll, for you. We'll, he'll definitely be back on the podcast because uh, this wasn't long enough. So yeah, thank bro. you guys for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. Uh, we're you. rushing because it's about to die. Bye.